Finally, we have reached the climax of our SHT1306 OLED display series, at least for now. In today's video, we will be implementing LVGL on the ESP32 using the ESP IDF environment. Earlier in this series, we covered the basics of LVGL, explored the core code structure and even discussed Squareline Studio generated UI files. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I highly recommend checking them out first to build a solid foundation. Namaste and welcome back to Avinashi Tech. Here we decode the world of embedded systems, breaking down protocols, reading data sheets, exploring open source libraries and putting it all together into simple yet powerful DIY projects. If embedded tech excites you, consider joining us on this journey. All right, let me fire up VS Code and open our ESP32 project folder. Let's quickly revisit where we are in this journey. This directory is set up as a Git repository and inside it, we have got two main parts, a main folder, which holds our ESP32 specific files, an OLED common folder with platform independent code, which is super handy if you want to copy SHT1306 library files over to another controller platform. So far, our progress has been up to the universal adaptation of the basic SHT1306 library with SPI implementation and a simple draw pixel function running on the ESP32. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I highly recommend checking it out first because today's work will build directly on the SHT1306 code as our foundation. Above this SHT1306 code, we will be utilizing LVGL related functions. So let me now open up the ESP IDF terminal and add the LVGL dependency, specifying the version we need, which would be 8.4.0. Once that's done, let's build the project. And now under the managed components directory, we should see our LVGL files. Wait a second. Where are they? You can't see me. Turns out I had to run a clean command first. After that, everything shows up fine. Inside the managed components folder, you will notice all the LVGL related files we already covered in our earlier videos. Now, here's something important to note for ESP IDF specifically. And that is unlike HTM32 or bare metal setups, we don't need to manually create a lvconf.h file here. Instead, LVGL configuration is handled via menu config. So let's head to the terminal and run the command IDF menu config. Inside the component config, we will scroll down to the bottom and find LVGL configuration. Now here's the key difference. While LVGL usually uses lvconf.h, in ESP IDF, all of the configuration gets stored in SDK config. If you prefer a separate config file, you can always uncheck this option right here and generate one, but I will stick with the default. Now let's tweak the settings. Under color settings, set the color depth to one byte per pixel, not RGB. Under font usage, enable UNS CII 8, then set it as the default theme font and disable Montserrat font, which was enabled by default earlier. And under themes, enable the monochrome theme and disable examples to keep things light. That's it. Press S to save and exit with the escape key. Next, let me copy all the image bitmap C arrays we created in one of our earlier videos to our ESP project here. After adding them into the main folder, I will modify the CMake list file to include all the source files for our build. Now, in our main application file, we will include the LVGL header. And from our LVGL common code folder, 
Yep, the one with LVGL and square line stuff we discussed in the last videos. I will copy the required macros and helper functions into our ESP32 project here. Since we no longer need the old character code from our last checkpoint of SHT1306 library, I will remove it from our main application of ESP32 project. Instead, I'll be adding a free RTOS task GUI task using the free RTOS task API. And by the way, we have also covered free RTOS tasks in detail in one of our other video. So check that one out if you are interested. Coming back inside this GUI task, everything is almost the same as we have discussed before. LV init, draw buffer, display driver init. But 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 a giant but huh? there's one important addition the esp timer section here we create a periodic timer with a period of 1000 microseconds that is one millisecond this timer is used to keep the lvgl tick counter updated basically it calls the lv tick task function every one millisecond as the timer callback all right let's try to build this Oh no, CMake error cannot find file. Okay, looks like just a typing error. SHT1307 instead of 1306. All right, let's fix it and try again. Oh, come on. Now missing variable. All right, let's declare that and build again. And if this doesn't work this time, I swear I'm going to destroy this machine. Hmm, <laughs> lucky me. The build is finally completed. Now let's flash it. Press the boot button on the board, upload, and it's done. And here it is. First, the text Avinashi Tech is displayed. Then the images are displayed in sequence. Mustache Man. 10 seconds delay, hat woman, 10 seconds delay, skyscraper, again delay, tiger, delay, and finally, a rose. Also, at the very end, one last text label to be continued. Let me now open up git bash and check the status of our modified files. I'll quickly update the git ignore file and then add and commit everything. This marks the LVGL integration of text and images that we just worked on. Now, before moving ahead, let me clarify one more time what's happening here. In the last couple of videos, we have discussed LVGL and Squareline Studio related code files. These files are designed to be universal, meaning they can work on both ESP32 and STM32 platforms just like our SHT1306 library. So what we are doing now is simple. That is, copy those files here into the ESP32 project and tweak them according to the platform we are targeting. Moving on, let's create a new folder called components. And inside it, copy our UI code along with the required modifications from the square line common folder we discussed in the last video. Next, we will clean up our ESP32 project's GUI task. That means we'll be removing the text and image display code. Instead, we will be calling UI init along with the update clock function. Make sure you have defined all the required variables. Now, inside the while loop of GUI task, the clock labels will continuously update. One important note, the UI.h file depends on LVGL.h. To avoid the file not found error, I have added the IDF component file of the LVGL dependency into the components slash UI folder as well. With that sorted, let's include UI.h in our main ESP32 source file. Perfect. Let's build. All right. Time to flash it. 
let's press the boot button on the SP32, upload the code and here we go. On the OLED, we now see day and date at the top, followed by hour, minute and second updating continuously from the reset default time of 7.30. That's it. From Squareline Studio all the way up to our OLED display, the journey of building a simple yet functional UI is now complete. Finally, let's commit these changes. This one goes in the log as our UI implementation using LVGL. These files would be available on GitHub and link to them would be available soon. And hey, if you find these videos helpful and want to support future such contents, you can also check out my Buy Me A Coffee page. It's a simple way to help me keep experimenting, building and sharing more videos with you. With this, we will wrap up today's video. We took our LVGL and Squareline base code and then brought it to life on the ESP32 module. We displayed text, images and finally built a simple but promising UI on our SST1306 monochrome OLED display. In the next video, we will take the very same common base code and repeat the process on STM32 hardware so you can see how portable this approach really is. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. This is Avinashi Tech signing off. Keep building, keep experimenting and most importantly, keep making those UIs for your display.